Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with If I Could Choose Only One Work by composer Lambda, it would have to be work, oh, I don't know, Pi. Why not call it that? Well, composer Lambda is Lou Harrison, and work Pi is one that one of you at least mentioned, because you know I love it so much, but it's not about what I love, it's about what's most characteristic. And that characteristic work is the ballet Solstice. Ooh, baby. Now, what is Solstice? Well, it sort of kind of has a plot about the change of seasons and like a solstice and sort of astrological things. And, you know, there's like a bull and a moose and a something. I don't know. It doesn't make any difference. The music exists as like a complete ballet and a suite. It is gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. It's very typically Lou Harrison. What was Lou Harrison? Well, he was an American composer. He passed away fairly recently. Um, this is 2023, I guess it's in the past, what, five years or so? I mean, I don't have the exact date, but you can look it up if you're curious. He was a remarkable creative inspiration. Um, he had a, a very wide range of reference. He wrote things everywhere from the dodecaphonic, like the symphony on G and things like that, or the almost dodecaphonic atonal type things, to modal and and simple Far Eastern influenced rhythmic, but still American expostulations. It's very hard to describe exactly what it was, but he was heavily influenced by by Asian music, by the Pacific side. He was a California guy, the Pacific side of the American classical music scene or the American art music scene, and that was a wonderful school. It included people like like Henry Cowell, for example, and and. Alan Hovannis, who actually was from Massachusetts, but wound up on that side of things. It really, a, a, a terrific group of composers, very diverse, actually, in how they operated. And, he, I mean, Harrison wrote wrote works in, in, in Esperanto. He was an internationalist, and he created the American gamelan out of out of compressed air cylinders and brake drums and found objects. He made an entire percussion ensemble that he wrote for quite magnificently. He used Indonesian and Balinese harmonic scale modes and things like that. Really, really just great. He wrote four symphonies, at least. There may be actually five if you add them all up. I don't know, but there's a bunch of those and orchestral works of various kinds. But Solstice, I think, is so typical of the guy. First of all, it's a septet. And it's a septet written, I think it's a septet or a nonet or something. Let's, let's count. It has a flute, an oboe, a trumpet, a celesta, a piano, two cellos, and a bass. I guess it's an octet. Somewhere around there, somewhere between seven and nine. The piano is a tack piano. That is, you put thumbtacks in the in in the the hammers, so it sounds almost like a harpsichord. It twangs. It's a wonderful primal sort of exotic sounding instrument. He Harrison developed this with with John Cage. He worked with John Cage, and collaborated with him on on a few things back when Cage was writing music that actually had notes and things like that. And in addition, in addition to the tack piano and the celesta, there's these other things, the music is is hauntingly modally beautiful. It's melodic. It has no counterpoint. Um, it has interesting sort of quasi exotic rhythms, um, which keep it moving. It, it, it is luminous, and it, you'll. It has a cool, tranquil beauty, with some very interesting dances and other things going on. And it's got some dramatic moments that make, you know, clicking and snapping sounds and whatnot. But by and large, it's absolutely one of the most haunting pieces of music, of 20th century music, for sure, that I've ever heard. And you will never get it out of your head once you've heard it. There isn't anything in the universe that sounds any, even remotely like it. Um, it's Quite, quite extraordinary. So, Solstice is the single work. And I have to say, as you know, the reason we are choosing these single works is to persuade the evil god Cancrazans, who's been on vacation for a little while, but now he's back, 
that that he should not destroy all of classical music, but for one work per composer, because he's irritated at the classical music military industrial complex and some of the awful snooty people who promote it. So he said, ah, the hell with you all. I'm just going to leave one work per composer unless you can convince me otherwise. And with Harrison, first of all, his range of stylistics and idiom is so wide, you can't just pick one work and get rid of all the rest. I mean, no, 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 that's impossible. Absolutely impossible. So there's that. And there's also the fact that Harrison's output was so, not just in terms of idiom, but expressively diverse in its range of influences and things that we wouldn't want to get rid of things like the concerto in Slendro for violin and percussion or the third and fourth symphonies. I mean, they're, they're, they're really major works, exceptional works, fascinating works. Lo Coro Sutro, choral work at Esperanto, come on. So definitely it's got to be solstice. Cancrazans will, I'm sure, be impressed and will want to hear more and will not deny us the opportunity of hearing more. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks so much for joining me. Take care.